Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with the Wood Elves, Orion, leading the Wild Hunt against the Empire. So let's take a look at the builds here. Of course, Orion leading the way. Uh, decided to change it up a bit. Orion is definitely a lot of fun. He's got anti-large AP, so he's going to be pretty good against uh, knights and griffins, steam tanks, stuff like that. Uh, he's got heavy AP missile damage as well, of course. Not the greatest melee defense or armor. But the, sh the Cloak of Isha helps keep him alive if he gets below 20% HP. He gets a bit of regeneration and 44% damage resistance. We've also brought the Horn of the Wild Hunt, which is kind of like Wa, similar, but without the melee attack buff. But it also doesn't have the conditional melee recharge either. 24% uh, speed, 36% charge bonus map-wide. Got a Spell Singer, Lore of Life here. And uh, looks like... Eternal Guard through the main line, four units of them. Single Glade Guard with Starfire Shaft. The Regiment of Renown, uh, Wild Riders here, the Wild Hunters of Kernos. Very good unit with their Guardian. They can give physical resistance to uh, Orion and other units uh, like the Spellsinger. Um, they've also got just great combat stats all around. Very good charge bonus of 67. Great light shock cavalry. We've also got the Hawkeyes of Jakira. Heavy AP missile damage and the smoke bomb helps them get out of danger. Two units of Glade Riders currently taking shots from the cannons over on the hill. And one unit of Sisters of Thorn to act as a bit of a vanguard here. For my opponent, he's got five swordsmen, two great cannons, and three spearmen in a kind of... A group over here and these guys are largely to act as bait for the massive ambush force of empire knights we've got six empire knights being led by boris toddbringer on a horse i definitely understand this pick uh, boris on the horse has a must have block chance he's got 105 armor he's got the regeneration with the midland rune fang uh you don't necessarily need ap always against the wood elves so being on the horse isn't that big of an issue he's also got decent enough combat stats to be able to hang around also comes with a few nice debuffs as well with the crush the weak and the white cloak of ulrich both of which my opponent have so i definitely like that pick in this particular matchup not a powerhouse lord but He's tanky, and putting him on the horse also makes him a bit mobile. He's also got a light wizard to net things down, and then again, six units of uh, Empire Knights. So let's get things rolling here. You can see the Sisters of Thorn over on the far side. Uh, since my opponent doesn't have any mass or mobility to respond here, we're just going to come straight in with a charge here, drop that Curse of Honor Air, and uh, those swordsmen are going to go tumbling down the hill with Jack and Jill and the bucket of water will be taken by the Sisters of Thorn and dumped on the heads of these cannoneers here who are taking a ton of damage. Meanwhile though, over on the far side you can see my opponent's ambush has been sprung. He's netted these wild riders and charged them. Has revealed some of my units here, but um, I'm gonna quickly respond and go ahead and just commit everything because there are a ton of Empire Knights here. This is a su significant portion of my opponent's army. I've got plenty of anti-large AP with all these Eternal Guards, some AP missiles and some mobility, and of course Orion for terror bombing. So uh, let's see here. This unit of Empire Knights gets loose. It's going to go after the Hawkeyes of Jakira. Uh, Orion is not too happy about that, so he's going to get in the side, interrupt that charge, start lancing these Empire Knights here. You can see the Empire Knights generally trying to pull away from this engagement, which is what they should be doing. There's tons of these uh, anti-large AP Eternal Guards here, but uh, the Glade Riders with Hagbane Tips and the Wild Hunters of Kernos coming in to stop things up here and start to drag uh, down the Empire Knights. You can see we're blocking them up. Actually didn't get a charge order, unfortunately, with those Wild Hunters, but still, the uh, the Hagbane tips have decent enough AP values that combined with the Starfire Shafts, and especially the Hawkeyes, they'll do a ton of damage here. So you can see the Empire Knights just in a desperate attempt to escape here. We actually do pop the uh, Wild, or sorry, the Horn of Kurnos, or whatever it is. There it is. The uh, Horn of the Wild Hunt, that is, that's it. To uh, buff up the speed, you can see He's Eternal Guard up to 41 speed, and with the uh, the Empire Knights being dragged down by the Poison, they're at 51, so it's much easier for the Eternal Guard to keep up. The, uh, the Wild Hunters as well, up to 89 charge bonus, and of course with plenty of speed as well to be able to keep up with the Empire Knights and continuously, you know, pin in their unit models, drag them down so they can then be caught up by this horde of Eternal Guard here, so... Already, this has tilted the balance of power in my favor and more or less won me the battle here, just being able to drag down this huge group of Empire Knights. And uh, yeah, you can see we're committing to the final engagement here. The, uh, the Glade Riders rushing in to finish things off here, just pin in the Empire Knights, then let the, uh, the Eternal Guards come through and do their work. So yeah, <laughs> Orion reversing the ambush quite nicely and ambushing the ambushers. 
And uh, the force on the hill just kind of left to stand there, which is definitely a bit of a mistake, but my opponent needed to push them forward and give some support to this cavalry force. Uh, in all honesty, the best move would have been for my opponent to wait in the forest longer and wait for me to commit further to taking out this force with the cannons and so on here. The, uh, the Sisters of Thorn did come back... Um, over here, they were routed off momentarily, but uh, they were able to take down the one cannon. Unfortunately, I did just leave them to chase some shattered units there, which is not the best, but uh, Boris trying to push in the back line. These Hawkeyes are just going to gat him down. Uh, you can see he's caught quite a few of the arrows on the shield there, but uh, enough of them are going to get through, and they do a substantial amount of damage. He gets hit by the smoke bomb, and then here comes the spell singer to pin him in place while the Hawkeyes pull back. Meanwhile, in the center, you can see the uh, Wild Riders having done some good cycle charging, pulling back in a way. The Eternal Guards finally meeting the state troops in melee, and Orion, of course, going to be doing some brutal AoE splash damage here against these state troops. Especially with the uh, loss of leadership, Boris is getting pretty low on HP. The cannons are getting some effective fire on those uh, Glade Riders. Unfortunately, it's a bit too little too late to bring the Empire back. Uh, it is going to be a victory for the Wood Elves. You can see Boris pushing through, trying to do his best here to finish off the Hawkeyes, but uh, he is only, unfortunately, one man. And these Empire Knights as well. I mean, Glade Guards have decent enough combat stats that the Empire Knights, once their charge bonus wears off, are going to struggle to make decent contact there. And the Glade Guards will actually trade okay, again, once the charge bonus wears off. That being said, you definitely don't want to get charged by a full unit of Empire Knights. <laughs> be, be aware of that. Uh, but a, a tattered unit like that, especially in a late game situation where they've had a lot of their vigor drained away and just in general the leadership's not great, the Eternal Guard will do just fine there. Oh man, look at Orion just giving these Empire State Troops, finishing things off here quite nicely. The Glade Riders pushing through the front line, finally getting back to these cannons to shut them down once and for all. So, well played to my opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that one. Uh, yeah, like I said, honestly, my opponent's army composition was pretty decent. There were a few things that I might fine-tune, um, but overall, the, the idea of what he was trying to pull off and, uh, you know... The, uh, the build itself wasn't terrible. It's certainly, I understand what he was going for there. Unfortunately, I was able to spot the ambush and just in the way that I deployed, because I deployed most of my forces in the forest there, I was right on station to be able to, to counterattack and shut down the ambush. And then as my opponent tried to retreat, we were just able to drag down his retreating knights. You can see all the knights really didn't pay out, and that was very much rough for my opponent. Uh, Boris himself able to get 21, and the cannon's doing some decent work. Um, um, but the Sisters of Thorn coming in to kind of shut that somewhat down early on so that both cannons weren't getting effective fire during that early stage of the battle. Uh, very cost effective. The Glade Riders, honestly, super MVPs here, applying that poison, being nice and mobile, and being able to counter charge in as well and pin in the Empire Knights, having the mass and mobility to do so. Wild Hunters of Kurnos, also absolute MVPs here, racking up 131 kills. A lot of those coming against Empire Knights. And uh, yeah, I was dumping most of my healing into them throughout the battle because they are a unit that if you can keep them alive, they will perform for you, most definitely. I mean, that, that 67 charge bonus plus is no joke. And uh, they are in the realm of the other elite tier shock cavalry. They don't have the sustainability, obviously, because they don't have the same armor. But they are much faster. So, you know, you do have that advantage of being able to outrun your opponent. And if your opponent tries to run away with their cavalry, these Wild Hunters will just eat them alive. So, I guess a bit of a PSA, if you are faced with Wild Hunters of Kurnos, the best thing you can do is try and stand and fight. Don't try and pull away from them with other heavy cavalry, because it just doesn't work. But, uh, yeah, the rest of the build doing decent. 47 kills to Orion himself, not too bad. Uh, for my opponent's build, again, I definitely understand what he was going for, and the army itself pretty decent. I might fine-tune a couple of things here. Uh, this many Empire Knights is actually not technically tournament legal, and I try and make my lists uh, within the uh, typical Warhammer Cup rules, also known as the uh, Ever Chosen Invitational rules, or those created by Shetley, Shetland Apache and Company for tournaments, which um, tend to limit units. Uh, if I can remember, I'll leave a link in the description down below, but uh, generally, you know, three to five units depending on the cost. Uh, more expensive units are more limited obviously and so a unit like Empire Knights I believe would be limited to four. Um, so four Empire Knights definitely not a bad idea. I personally am a big fan of Reichsguard so I'll bring a couple of them to supplement uh, the Cav Force. I actually am rather than taking Boris I'm gonna take the Archlector 
and uh, that's for a, a few reasons. Uh, number one, his buffs are super good. They are just unbelievably good. He's also a pretty tanky character. Uh, doesn't have the same offensive power as Boris, and obviously doesn't have the regeneration, but the buffs in particular are very good here, and the fact that he's so cheap makes him nice and effective. Cost effective, that is. Uh, shielded infantry, plenty of them, not a bad idea at all. Spearmen with shields, certainly uh, not a bad idea also. Uh, maybe a few free company, although they can got sh get shot up a little bit here. Um, cannons, pretty decent. And we've got a little bit of funds left to get some kind of spellcaster. So uh, with the Jade Wizard, or sorry, with the Archlect, you're probably going to want to go for a Jade Wizard here. Grab some healing, and let's see if we can make this guy work. Oh man, we're just eight gold shy of what we need to be. So uh, I might have to come in here and fine-tune some things and try and find something to cut here. Maybe we just cut one of the shields on these guys or something. But yeah, something like this I think would be pretty solid. Again, just fine-tuning things a little bit here. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of the Arch Lector. He doesn't have a missile block chance, so that's something to be aware of. He will take more damage from the concerted missile fire there. But, I mean, he does have the ability to drop that Grand Shield of Faith to give him a bit of magic resistance, or sorry, damage resistance. And the Grand Soul Fire gives him magic resistance, which uh, a lot of the Wood Elf armor piercing missiles used to do magic damage. That's not necessarily the case anymore. Like if we go over here and just look, uh, Starfire Shafts used to do magic damage, but they no longer do. They now only do fire damage. Uh, the Swift Shiver Shards, which is a mouthful, of the Deepwood Scouts uh, do have magic damage, but the Way Watchers do not. So the armor piercing missiles that you're likely to face actually don't have magic damage, so that wouldn't necessarily provide benefit there, but it could provide benefit in other ways. If your opponent happens to bring Durthu, for example, he does magic damage, so if you get caught out by him, you certainly don't want to be fighting him one-on-one, -on -one, but if you do happen to get caught out, um, you know, you do have that uh, that magic resistance ability there. Uh, the Glades uh, bow shot also does magic damage, so there's a little bit of a, a benefit to bringing that here. Although it's not wildly useful, I wouldn't say. Um, like, it's not necessarily essential, so if you wanted to say, like, put your Jade Wizard on a horse, for example, you may come in and cut that Grand Soul Fire, and you'd, you'd have the funds to grab that. And maybe we give this guy his shield back, just so he doesn't get shot to pieces. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.